So it's developer skill sprint time and in this session we're going to be looking at adding taskbar controls to our Windows applications to really modernize and give much greater usability around our applications to our end users. And we're going to see how we can really do that in a very simple way using um, with the RAD tools from Embarcadero. So my name is Stephen Ball and please feel free to catch up with me at, at Delphia Ball on Twitter. Um, or you can um, contact through to um, the developer directs online at embarcadero.com. So this is, I say, one of the skill sprint sessions. So these are short format sessions. So we should be ready to go. Um, there's going to be tips and tricks as we go. Some short URLs along the way to note down. Uh, all the short URLs start embt.co. So you can literally just write down the last bit, uh, which is case sensitive. So do grab those. Um, but over the next 20 minutes, we're going to dive into how we can uh, use the taskbar uh, very, very easily through our applications and see it in, in live demo. Uh, and at the end, there'll be some chance for some Q&A. So if you're not watching this live, where were you? Uh, make sure you register up for the future sessions on the Embarcadero's event page. Um, but uh, please, uh, if you are watching live, use the Q&A um, window on the GoToWebinar and um, get those questions coming through. Uh, we'll be answering them live as we go. XE6 has introduced a brand new component. It's a non-visual component. It's the T taskbar and specifically designed for Windows. Uh, it allows you to present your application's window um, as a live preview on the taskbar. But it also allows you to go beyond that with the introduction of buttons and icon overlays and to show the progress um, that your application has for a task that you may be running um, using a, a number of different properties that can be run individually or combined up together. Now the great thing is that this hooks into technologies we've been using for years with actions and so on. Um, the principles behind the progress are exactly the same as a progress bar where you set the, the maximum value and then the position and the icon overlay is just assigning an image to the uh, the icon property. So very, very simple and easy to use but adds a whole wealth of capabilities. Now this is really important when it comes to usability. Um, the number of times that you may have a background task running and you want to be able to indicate to the user how it's progressing without them having to flick back to your application to view something and then come back. Um, they can see at a glance just from the taskbar exactly how something is getting on, um, which means they can get on with other things and they can be more productive. Um, now, this may be whilst they're still working on something else in your application, or it may be if they're multitasking with other applications as well. But either way, the, the taskbar components really do add some great capabilities that we'll see as we go through some demos now. So I think. Rather than uh, spend some time in slides, I really want to get into the demos, so let's just get in there. So we're going to have a look at the same demo now for both Objective Pascal and C++. Uh, and the great thing is, um, because it's using the same component, it's the same component properties, um, once you know it for one language, you know it for both. So um, we're going to have a look at everything that you've got today. So if you go to uh, your documents directory, and go to the Embarcadero um, Studio, oh, try the other one, uh, 14 samples. Now the um, samples is an SVN directory so you may want to just right click and update um, your SVN if you've got Tortoise installed. Um, but once you've got that updated you'll have all the latest demos. Now within here we've got C++ and also Object Pascal um, versions uh, and then underneath you got uh, the VCR directory and we're going to go to the taskbar one. Now there's three sample demos in here. One which is a video player example, um, one which is uh, a general form that shows all the capabilities and the other one is an MDI example. So we're going to have a look at these two today uh, primarily. Uh, but let's start off with the C++ one and just open this up here. So Nice and simple, uh, we've got a, a T taskbar component which you can just find in the tool palette. Just type in you know, task and you'll find it there pop up. So just add one of those onto your application. Uh, and then on here, we're, we'll start off, we'll work our way down uh, the different capabilities, but let's start off with the, um, 
setting the progress indicator on the taskbar. So to do this, there's a couple of component properties that we need to, to know about, and that's the progress max value, the progress value. So this is the same as working with a progress bar. Um, we say that maybe the, the maximum value is, you know, I'm working with 570 records. Um, so each time I iterate through one, I want to update this to be one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, the um, other thing here is the, the progress state. Now the progress state indicates if it's if there's no state, so we're not showing anything on the progress bar, if it's indeterminate. So basically, if you've got a task that you're not quite sure how long it's going to take to run, or the amount that it's got to go and do, then you can set it to indeterminate and it will just kind of progress through showing that something's happening but not quite sure how much of what is happening has happened. Um, then there's the normal state, which is uh, what you typically use. But then there's two additional states, which are paused and error. And these change the color of the progress to be able to show that the progress has still happened, but where it's kind of got to, and that something has happened that isn't quite right, if it's an error, or if it's paused, that you've actually stopped the progress um, for some reason. So let's just see this in action. Uh, it's really nice, easy code. Um, for example, on the track bar here, we literally just set the taskbar properties, um, so the position equals the progress value, uh, and then on the drop down here, we literally just set the progress state to be the irrelevant uh, version that's been selected. So let's go ahead and, and run this and see it happening. So if we watch, uh, oh, because well, I've set it to indeterminate, let's just go and change this to normal. Uh, no progress, there we are. So, as you can see here, if we set the value, nothing's happening at the moment because our state is no progress. If we do change it to normal, then we'll be able to see that the task bar icon now indicates how far the application is through processing that task. Um, if we change it to pause, then we can see that we still maintain the same position, but it changes the color to show visually to the end user that something has paused uh, and if we change it to error then we can see obviously it just shows as error and even when this is minimized you can see um, it enhances the color slightly but it shows still that that's what's kind of going on now the indeterminate one literally just as we saw at the start uh, loops through showing that something's running but we're not quite sure how far it is through running which is kind of cool so something else that we can use is the icon overlay. Now the icon overlay, uh, let's just set this to none. Uh, the icon overlay allows you to show um, an image to indicate to the user something is going on. Now this could be that a message has arrived that they need to react to, or their data needs refreshing, or, or whatever. Um, so if we just double click on one of these here, you can see that the icon now has that image overlaid onto it to indicate that the specific state um, is, is there. So that's a very useful thing. Um, to remove it, just set the, um, the icon overlay to nil, uh, and that'll then just clear, clear that out. So um, to do that here, uh, literally we've just got an image with an on-click, and we just set the image picture icon to be the taskbar overlay icon um, which again is the property on uh, on here so overlay icon now there's also a hint that you can do um, with the overlay um, so you can put in the you know mail ready or you know 100 messages or, or whatever else you want to put in there um, which allows you to obviously um, give some visual text to, along with the icon as well um, which is kind of cool so next I wanted to uh, look at the buttons, which is the next bit down here. Now buttons uh, are what we can see if we just go run this again. Um, if we move the mouse over here, we can see we've got a few different buttons that are showing. Now these buttons are um, controlled through a set of actions that we have on the form here. So we've got action one, two, and three. And you can see the images that have been associated 
Now, this is the same way that um, uh, in the past we, we hook up an image list to an action list. So this is just literally picking up on stuff that we've been using for years uh, and transforming that down to the taskbar. So literally, as simple as taking the taskbar component and on the taskbar buttons, just going to the collection, adding an icon, and say, right, it's this action. That is as simple as it is to actually add a new um, taskbar button onto the screen. So we've got three here. Um, the visibility here is um, controlled through this apply changes, and we literally just set the action visibility to be true or false depending on the checklist. Uh, and then we tell the taskbar to apply the button changes. So you can make a set of changes um, whilst you're working on things, and then tell it to go apply those changes. Um, so you don't have to, you know, it's not going to be updating it as you go. You need to tell it to apply the changes, but that's quite good for being able to update a, a big list of them and then pushing it through. It's quite efficient that way. So if we go ahead here, let's just uh, maybe take a, a button off. Uh, we can see that we've now got two on here. Uh, if we put in here, hello world, and, uh, and down here, let's say button two, we can now click that and see hello world come up. So it's very easy using the uh, the button actions um, then to be able to link back to the on-click event which then references the correct edit box here for example um, but this hooks directly into whatever code we've got running already in our applications which is great okay so the last thing that I want to show you really around the um, the setting of the different properties here is to do with the clip region now the clip region is um, is pretty cool because uh, you can specifically define which part of the screen you want to show as the overlay. So let's just see it in, in action. Then we're going. I'm just going to take off uh, the indeterminate state on my icon here. Let's rerun again. So at the moment we see the whole form. That's the default. But what if we wanted to show a specific section? Uh, now I know from talking to people they've been using this for. Uh, they're already taking this code and using it now for things like access control. Um, so they have a picture on the screen that pops up with the name just underneath it. So they're just clipping that part of the region. So if we say, well, let's take you know left. Uh, we want to go kind of a hundred across, uh, go a hundred down. Um, we we'll do the height of what we're selecting to be uh, let's do 150, and the width to be 150 here. Let's apply that clip. Now we can see that that actually gives us a a part of the screen in here, so maybe uh, we'll go left 200 and top 200 and apply that clip again and we can see we're now getting a, a different part of the screen. So you really can define up specifically where you want um, the preview to be focusing on um, which is kind of cool from a usability point so you can see directly even if the application's not uh, maximized you can see quickly what's going on on that screen uh, using uh, the preview. Um, so literally the code behind this, again it's just take the preview clip region and set the left top height and width properties and apply the clip area changes. Um, really really simple to do. So let's have a look at the same project now um, in Objective Pascal and I uh, I say once you know how to do it with once one, it's exactly the same with the other. So with the last one, we're just changing you know the dash and the arrows to dots and the full colons uh, equals from equals. It's exactly the same methods, properties, and so on. Um, so obviously take advantage of things like the T taskbar progress state uh, and being able to call that enumerated type to um, define um, the progress state and so on. Okay, so the other demo that I want to show you is to do with the MDI um, uh, with MDI applications. So we're going to have a look at this one in Objective Pascal, uh, and let's go to our VCL, uh, go down to our taskbar, and go and to, the MDI. to the source code for this sample. So let's um, first off explore what we have here. Now we've got two forms, and we've got the main MDI form. And then we have a child form, which is basically what's created here 
Now if we go and have a look underneath, uh, we see we create a child form and it then goes and loads a picture up, um, which is the one that's created from the open file dialog. So on here we've got a, a taskbar component and this is going to basically allow it to show each individual MDI child as part of the collection for the application that's running. So if we go run this, now I've got a, a couple of images here, let's go and oh, I need to add JPEG support to this demo, so let's just go in here, uh, vcl.imaging.jpg. And now we can open up our, our child. Um, let's open up another one. So we've now got two different images opened, and we can see that down here we've got our two different MDI child forms. So, and you can see as we switch between one and the other, um, that it flicks between the specific form. So, which is kind of cool. So that's a, a pretty useful. Um, enhancement to MDI child applications, um, allowing you to <clears throat> have multiple forms now showing compactly um, within the taskbar um, and uh, being able to set the properties on each one as well. Kind of cool. Okay, so that really is um, uh, about it that I want to take you through on the, um, on the examples today. Uh, I'll leave you explore the additional sample as your homework, um, it really is nice and easy, just a few actions and it allows you to play video um, directly through um, the application, see how the actions can play, pause and stop it. Um, what we've seen with the T-Task Bar is how it's really easy to integrate progress indicators, how we can add task bar buttons, how we can link these up to existing actions and image lists that we've already got existing in our applications today how the icon overlay can be added to be able to supply a nice uh, usability point um, down to the taskbar even further, how using the screen preview um, we can clip the specific action, uh, section of the screen that we want um, and, uh, and make that visible through the, the icon on the taskbar as well which is pretty cool. What this means really is that you know much better usability across the board uh, and you know, going further, how you know, the MDI form switching is you know, is something that's really easy to do now um, with the application. So, the summary of the the task um, bar resources, um, the samples directory again, um, both Objective Pascal and C++ samples there. Um, I say once you know the component loads, you really know it for both platforms. It's very very easy to use. Um, there's some nice uh, blogs. Um, and also DocWiki articles. If you go to docwiki.embarcadero.com then from there uh, you'll be able to find the, the current Red Studio uh, branch and have a look for the VCL task bars um, your, uh, part uh, and there's a number of links within that page to um, different sections you can see the whole kind of hierarchy of where the components come from and a whole load more on the technical details there. Um, and from the blog point um, there's a nice video and, uh, and kind of pointed back to the source samples on Serena DuPont's um, uh, blog as well. So uh, definitely worth having a quick review there. Now, if you've not had a play with this yet, then I'd definitely say go and download the trial. Uh, again, that's one of the short URLs, uh, trial downloads, uh, all lowercase. Um, that's really a uh, best place to, to kind of get going and playing with this now. So before we head into the Q&A, um, just a reminder, next time through, uh, which is on Tuesday, uh, we're going to be looking at modernising your Windows look and feel with the TMS Modern UI Bonus Pack, uh, which is part of the, um, the bonus pack that we're providing at the moment with um, new purchases of Rad Studio. So if you're getting onto Rad Studio XC6, you'll be getting the, the bonus pack, uh, which includes the, the TMS Modern UI um, controls. Um, some really, really nice controls, smooth controls and so on, that are really, really cool controls to work with for the VCR applications. So really, now, time for some Q&A. Yeah, um, Bruce asks about um, 
um, using the T-Task bar um, with XP. Obviously, the, the APIs that um, are in Windows that are required came in with Vista, uh, and as XP is now kind of ended life um, and is not supported by, by Microsoft anymore. Um, you're, uh, we don't support, obviously, using that back on that version. So um, if you do want to use the T-Task bar component, then it is for the supported platforms uh, of Windows only. Um, if you do want to run back on XP, then um, yeah, um, it's a little bit hard to kind of uh, go and use that component at the moment. Yeah, a few comments about um, places to go and find help as well. Um, yeah, obviously, um, check out the blogs um, at the blogs.embarkadero.com. Um, and uh, uh, also, you know, there's uh, a number of MVPs on, on our directory. I see we've got a couple of them online um, today. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, you can uh, make contact with the local MVPs. Um, I'd really recommend, if you can, getting a hold of um, a local user group going in and joining in with them because uh, you can learn so much from others around you with not only about coding things but uh, where to go find specific help and um, quirky things that you might kind of come across that you need to work with with business and so on. So um, user groups are always a great thing to get involved with. Um, Alf asks about being able to port the um, components back into Delphi 2007. Um, well, you know, when you when you buy XC6, you get a copy of the source code in there, so um, you may be able to um, port one of the components backwards. Um, obviously, um, back as far as 2007, you've got things like um, Unicode that we've now gone through. Um, there's a number of other bits, so a number of uh, unit refactorings as well, um, which may make it a little bit more complicated, but um, I'd probably say the easiest thing out is just to get your code uh, and update it to XE6 and uh, and then get off and run from there um, for sure. Will an app that uses T-Taskbar still run on Windows XP without error? I know the Haspar features won't apply, but I don't want to stop XP users from running the app by using Taskbar. Um, it uh, It's VCL only and it's Vista 7, 8 um, only. Uh, on XP, it doesn't yeah, play, I, it doesn't play well. What you probably want to do is, is create, if you want to make sure you're supporting XP, is create the taskbar component manually and then check to see what platform you're on before you instantiate yeah. it. Or inherit from the taskbar component, override the constructor, test the Windows version, and, uh, and then just end. Something like that. That might work, yeah. Um, I suppose you could disable the taskbar if you're never using it uh, and do that in your form create, check the Windows version. Um, uh, and it doesn't work with FireMonkey currently. It's VCL only for now. So um, I'll pass that feedback along. I think, uh, let's see, somebody else was also asking me, I think it was Oren was asking, would we make it work with FireMonkey if you're doing Windows? Um, I'll pass that along to product management. Let's see. Uh, yeah, and Stefan's saying just check the OS version and then just exclude the taskbar stuff. That's that's what to do. Um, uh, Rob is asking, is there an example available where things are shown when right mouse clicking on the taskbar icon? And Jim's got his uh, notebook here because uh, I never tried right mouse clicking. So I I right mouse clicked on it and we're not you still get the default menu. I'm not seeing anything for changing that, so I'm just looking real quick to see if I'm missing something okay. or if, what it is. So give me a minute here. Yep. Uh, let's see. As far as initial questions go, Brian's asking the first question did not apply. It's already oh yeah, the questions. Okay. Haven't done any mobile development uh, uh, yet. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for the feedback. Um. Let's see, is there a tutorial on setting up the XE6 environment to use the new device? Um, I need to use Samsung Galaxy Note Pro, uh, 2560 by 1600 resolution, 12.12 inch screen. Uh, there are, in the start here page, in the welcome page, there, down towards the bottom, there are configuring and setting up your things like your SDKs and NDK for Android. Um, as far as, um, Having the design design environment, you can there's tools options, device manager, and where you can create custom devices uh, with a bitmap and set up their 
their resolution, their top left, lower right, and and such. Um, I've done that before. It's, it's pretty straightforward. The thing you want to make sure is have an image, a background image that you're going to use that needs to be. Um, needs the right size on the inside of the client area, yeah. right inside of the bitmap. Yeah. So your your client area needs to fit inside that. And the other thing is you want to look at um, the actual. So the resolution that you quoted is probably the actual pixel resolution, but you need to look at the pixel density because um, based on pixel density, the uh, design pixels that you're using are different than the screen pixels. So, for example, on iOS, you have retina, which is double pixel density. And so if it's uh, 2048, it's really 1024. So 1024 design pixels, but 2048 uh, rendering pixels. So what I've done in the past, when I'm not sure what it is, is I put a uh, a panel down the form or, or, or a layout and say, fill a line client and then run it and have it at design time, at runtime display how big that panel is. And then you know what the, the pixel is. So there's other ways to call an API, but that's the easiest and quick way to check it. And so once you know that, then that's what you want to design, the, use in the device manager when you're setting up your, your custom uh, custom device in the device manager, which is screen inside a XC5, XC6. Um, let's see. There are some other predefined, they're not given a name, they're more generic uh, design time settings that, that might be close enough to the, to the device that you have, uh, but you can always create your own. Yep. Um, the other thing is it, as I always remind everybody that design time look is so you can orient and and feel like comfortable about building your app, but by using layouts, alignments, anchors, um, then you can design the interface so that when you build an app, it'll run on any device exactly that is supported at the hardware level. So, and again, the style settings will check when FireMonkey instantiates itself. It knows how to use, for example, an iOS standard resolution, retina resolution. That's built in automatically. You can always override that with a custom resolution. And then uh, the other thing is, and, and same on Android, it's we support one, one and a half, two, and three times resolution. And again, FireMonkey will start up and see what you're on and, and do the best thing. So scaled layout or using layouts, using alignments, and Anchor is the best way to make sure your app uh, will work great and look pleasing on every um, on every on every device. And as far as creating those design time environments, uh, I will do more of them for popular devices. But again, you can create your own and you can even share them with other people. Um, question. So, go ahead. I, on Rob, you asked about the uh, right-click menu. It's called a jump list, and so I found an example of some Delphi code or uh, customizing jump list. I have not tried this, so uh, you can paste that into the I'll paste this in here. into the answer. Yeah. Um, Post on. Show. Let's see. Give it any, a shot and let me know how it works. Any recommendations on how to get that background image? Uh, you just got to go find one and then maybe play with it in a bitmap editor. <clears throat> what you really care about is that inside of the bitmap surrounding of the rest of the plastic and or whatever it is for the phone? What I did is I uh, opened up Photoshop and made a box the size I wanted the client area to be and then added an external glow, I think, on it or something like that just so it had a little bevel yeah. and then cropped it at the edge of the glow and threw that in there and that's what I was doing. So that's what I was doing before, in XE5 for Google Glass layout before we had Google Glass device in XE6. And as far as subversion and the samples, uh, yes, um, you know, go to the samples, right mouse click, or if you've got Tortoise or something else, you can uh, tell it to do an update and always have the latest samples. Um, uh, you should be able to just right mouse click on samples. There's also notes in the doc wiki about updating your samples from SourceForge. Uh, somebody asked, uh, I'm t attempting to download the taskbar sample using subversion. Uh, okay, Ian, uh, it's in the branches. So you need to go to Rad Studio Demos Code Branch. So just out of curiosity, uh, the question was about the support for under FireMonkey. So it doesn't show up as a component in FireMonkey, but if you add those units to your users clause and instantiate it in code, it works. At least the uh, 
the progress bar indicator works. So I'm not sure if everything will work, but at least some of it does. It sounds like a blog post. Yes. So I'll, I'll evaluate, see what else works and doesn't work. But uh, maybe an example of what a code in, in form create where you could test and then disable the test bar if you're on some other operating system. Yeah. I think that would do it is form create and or override the constructor and create your own. And Jim, why don't you take the next one from Neville because you've been playing with that today. Does this fail on older operating systems like XP, which keeps coming up? I don't know why. Move forward, yeah. everyone. Move forward. So XP, th th this uses APIs that are only available on Vista, uh, Windows 7 and Windows 8. So it does not work on XP. It actually provides an error. In that case, so you would need to either... Um, only instantiate it in code after testing the OS or somehow prevent it from running on an older operating system. I guess you put a try block around it maybe and capture the exception or something. Yeah. 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 With, with, that's possible too. Yeah. The, 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 it really comes down to that when uh, XP was end of life, we took it out of the testing cycle and uh, yep. it wasn't, wasn't designed to work with XP. And you also did some testing earlier today because somebody asked about, can I use it with FMX on Windows versus right. VCL? So, so uh, it doesn't support FireMonkey on Windows, but if you add the units to your users clause and instantiate it in code, you can get the uh, uh, progress bar indicator and the overlay to work from uh, FMX. So it doesn't do the taskbar buttons or the clip region on, F on FireMonkey, but it does do the uh, progress states and the icon overlay. Yeah, so if you say file new FireMonkey app, it won't show up in the project in the component palette, and so you can't find it through ID Insider, drag and drop it. But as Jim mentions, we always figure out ways to do things in code, even if they're not something you should be doing, right? Not recommended. <laughs> not recommended. There you go. There's uh, a next one from Glenn. Do you see that question there? Yeah. Is it possible to show multiple forms if the app is not MDI? We use a page control to display forms in. Can we show these in the taskbar? Uh, I don't know, because it's specifically dealing with the forms. Um, but is it the clipping region of the form or clipping region of the application? Huh. Well, it would, the clipping region would apply to the form, but yeah. he's not the, cause so the M MDI support means you go to the taskbar, it shows all the forms that make up the MDI application. Yep. But uh, if he's using a page control instead of the MDI, then I'm not sure if they'd show up in the case. Uh, you'd have to experiment with it and see. Okay. And Steven's saying he's having a problem with it. I just was using the overlay icon. It was working fine. So I'll look into that bug you mentioned, Steven, to see if... Because, uh, yeah, it, I, uh, Steve, Steven show, or Stefan showed it, and uh, I've used it, and they both, both cases it seems to work fine. No, it's always great when we get a QC number. That always just helps, right? Yep, yep, that's always great. So and sometimes it's like, oh, well, it's the 24-bit uh, color icon, doesn't you know, or something. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> there was a question earlier, which actually was a really good one, so I can find the about the jump lists. So another feature of, uh, uh, I think it was introduced in Windows 7, is the, uh, the taskbar jump list. And there's uh, some code sample I found online. I can find it real quick. I have to do uh, jump lists. So jump lists are where you can have like recent items or something like that also in the right-click menu from the taskbar. Yep, here's, this is the blog post I found. So I haven't, I haven't tried okay. this, but it, I think, goes along right with what we're showing here today with how to add jump lists. They can take a look at that link I just added to the chat window. Well, I think we'll call it a day. Thanks, David, for... Uh, I like the format as well. This is good stuff. Lots of great new features. If you haven't checked out XC6 yet, go ahead and download the trial and give it a look. The Most of the stuff you're seeing here this is the samples that are shipping with XC6, so you can uh, check out those samples, follow along for the next skill sprint, perhaps, and uh, learn, learn to take advantage of this new technology. So thank you very much for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you again on Tuesday next week. Until then, goodbye.